Good day. Gentlemen. After a long wait and a chaotic first day of the update, we finally got the most awaited Croc update, also known as the Easter update, also known as the Bug update. Because of how much everything was broken the first day of the release. However, the devs have been working on improving it, which is always a good thing. Even more after what led to the release of this, which I am not going to talk about it. Anyway, let's do this as I used to. Before you play, you gotta know where you are. With that out of the way, let's get right into it, shall we? So, basically, the entire map has been changed in some way. Some drastically, some subtly, and fair prey is just there. So, seeing that this is an aquatic team update, let's start with the new watery regions. Also, seeing that it will be a massive section of the video otherwise, I'm going to light speed my way through them just saying the new changes. The coast has received a nice glow up, giving it a new water color that really gives a tropical feeling. Also, it has some islands in the sea where you can chill, find food, and take advantage of the free real estate. There, you could find the new fishes, Uncle Pristis Nimula and Ancipenser Albertensis, two massive fish that fight back, one with huge amounts of bleed and the other with big damage. Also, Uncle Pristis has become the real apex. Well, not anymore because of lag and an atrocious code, all fishes have been changed to just being spawn corpses. But anyway. There hasn't been a lot of changes in the swamp other than making the water deeper and brackish, a mechanic that I will talk about later. It has expanded into becoming the most extensive biome and of the map with the good old river, a big marsh, mangroves and the magnificent cinder lake, the biggest lake in the game, a fantastic place to be with any semi-aquatic like spinosaurids, dinocurus and even cerato, plus the new bundle of dinos. It has changed a lot to have more vegetation, that's it. Its layout has changed also, but it still has the plateau pond. So yeah, that's the only place you can drink really. It has a river, but it's basically all brackish water. If you want to drink, you either go to the cent to Cinder Lake or the plateau pond. It has gained a lot more glade ferns, a lot. Also, it's the place where I learned that Woodwardia ferns got changed. The biggest change was in Okash Reservoir, making it more hidden, though it's still Okash Reservoir, so uh, yeah, you still get a lot of people there. Also, Upper has changed quite a bit, gaining a new planes and make it more open, so basically Upper can be classified as the new Okash if you want to talk about it. This is a massive forest that, honestly, is probably the best looking in the game with a beautiful clear named Wolverton Creek, which doesn't have a creek, and its most famous location, Upper Ravine, a massive gorge that goes from the Upper Mire all the way up. It now has trees. Let's go. It also has a nice bit of environmental storytelling, which I always like in maps. Near the upper ravine, you can find the rift, a volcanic wasteland that has a rift of lava running through it that leads to the lava tubes. It's a small but a nice thing I like. And let's take a moment to say goodbye to the biomes we lost, and let's all make a moment of silence for the grandmother, which, after fighting for her life, being bedbound for a whole three months, it has officially 
been taken away from us. Overall, I think these changes are neat. But my main issue with the map is the lack of crossing spots that are actually visible. And of course, the rivers are a pain to get out in certain pine parts of the map and a certain dinos. You need to really try to actually get to land. Which really sucks when you're trying to swim to the other side of the river or if you actually just get in the water. With the new water biome, we've also got new swimming. Before, it was infuriating to try and swim. The controls were clunky, you could only dive with a camera, which, you know, always had your tail sticking out. Trying to ambush was weird, and you could only regain one oxygen per second. Now, you can dive and ascend with the control and space bar, respectively. By holding the Vicky, you can also cruise and you regain 10% of your oxygen instead of 1 point. Also, you now stay in place in water. Speaking of water, there are now three types of water. Fresh water, found in ponds, lakes, rivers, found in land, and basically all of the west, which doesn't give you anything bad if you drink it. Brackish water, that is found in estuaries where the river and the sea meet each other. And in the swamp. Basically, don't go to swim. Drinking this water will give you a new effect, which is basically the water version of rotten sickness, which gives you an increased water twin, wobbly vision, and your dino starts moving weird with a green hue over your screen. Salt water found in the main sea around the map is visibly distinct from the rest of its bright for the rest by its bright blue. This gives you the harshest version of salt sickness effect. It was supposed that some that crocs and spinosaurids could drink salt water, but this isn't implemented yet. Night vision has gotten a change and it's aight. Yeah, it's aight, I like it. However, I I don't like diurnal or crepuscular vision in caves. You get absolutely flashbanged, which is really annoying. They also revamped the food system, and have and I have some mixed feelings about it, especially on how it is at the moment. For once, I like how the food is based off of weight, which means that Dino's weight determines how much food it has. So a 75 kilogram Dinonychus has 75 food whenever you kill it and a 16-ton Elder Dinosuchus gives 16,000 food. This helps with some weird interactions like a carno eating a whole galley and barely getting any food, even though galley is quite a big animal, making it completely worthless to try and hunt your preferred food. For now, but now it's worth. However, on the other side, Almost every single carnivore in the game has such low food capacities that, for example, as a vista, you can feed yourself with a protoceratops. You can even eat those baby ciripatic corpses and keep on going. And if you find a dead adult meteor from, I don't know, a dead uh, devil all the way to even a staraco, Man, you can just mark your territory around it and, it and make it a massive place for you to live out of that one body. And you will still eat like half of it because it just before it just rots. Hello guys, I did 18 Tamago over here, and I just wanted to expand a little bit in what I just said here. So, the background video you've been watching are 43 minutes of me as Alo eating a full adult Kentrosaurus body and marking my territory to see how much food and how long will it last and my findings are a little bit 
I don't know how to tell you. So, I marked a total of 62 hexagons. And if the message of have of being each hexagon, 10% of your food is real, that means a one adult Kentrosaurus can feed up to six aloes from zero to 100% food. And as you can see in the video, I, I even started just drinking, cleaning myself and sleeping. So it could have been even more or even less. And the fact that I could basically claim all that territory all by myself is, is not something good if I do say so myself. That is just a lot of food into waste. It's, it's ridiculous. And that's aloe. Imagine, no, not even aloe, that's just Kentro. Now imagine if aloe are killed a Diplo. They could just claim the entirety of Fern Scrublands and even Fern West. Jesus. Okay, so that's all. Uh, let's just continue with the video and thank you for watching if you're in here. This new system in its current iteration has to realize hunting for basically all carnivores. I will just increase all the food capacity of all carnivores so that, you know, hunting is a thing again. Also, very recently, they removed the anti-mix pack and mega pack systems. I don't know how to feel about this. However, I will, I will stay away from Okash. Okay. So all the next mechanics are tied to the new dinos. Well, there are no dinosaurs, but whatever. This update has given us three distinguished gentlemen. These three stars of the show. The crocodiles. All of these share three main mechanics. The first and most important of all, sun well-being. By sitting in direct contact with the sun and pressing the T key, your croc will sunbathe. They will, this will increase your sun well-being by one point per five seconds, which means it will take you an approximate of eight minutes to go from zero to 100. And why is this important? Well, if your sun well-being is low, you get extremely slow and weak. But you also get a greatly decreased water and food drink. So keep your sun well-being in check. The best time to sunbathe is from 8.45 a.m. to 9.30ish p.m. It's hard to determine correctly the end of the day when the shade stretch just so much and blocks sunlight. But I guess it's the very similar to the time of diurnal dinos to get their night vision. Also, they've got the slippery ability, as well as Amphiceratops, but yeah. Whenever they are in direct contact with bodies of water, but also touching land, not swimming, you get, I believe, a 50% speed boost, and it really shows. You get very fast as all three. Lastly, their temperature will be has changed and works different. Even though you can go upwards of 40 degrees and down to, I believe, 8 degrees, if you go under 28, your temperature will be well decrease. This, combined with the sun well being, gives you levels of pain that are huge. Anyway, time to talk about the crocs. It all starts with this little iguana. Supposed to be an infectionist, even listed as such in its realism profile and its in-game description. However, it's a full-on crusher. So, uh, we didn't get our Megalaniant. Costing $5,000 reduced, Maha is the second smallest carnivore in the game at 312 kilograms, but also the strongest in terms of raw damage. It does quite a lot normally, like 
Serato levels of damage. But with its bear trap ability, it can do upwards of... My god. It's also quite speedy and resistant. Not to mention that it can dolphin jump. Devs, if you're watching this, please never fix this and make it an actual mechanic for Mahayanga. This is the most fun and intended thing that has happened to this game since the flying glitch. I would love to just jump out of the water into a ledge and absolutely obliterate the bones of another guy. But some of you might say, but, 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 but it's unrealistic. And I guess a 300 kilogram crocodile can jump almost 2 meters off the ground, because that's realistic I guess. Overall, I like this little goober, as it's a good introduction to aquatic gameplay in a fun yet strong playable. Basically, making Mahayanga Chukus what Chihuahua think they are. Not gonna lie... This is just expensivity. <laughs> At 150,000 amber, you get a croc that has nothing unique other than it being slower in land and faster in water than Ichi, but being ever so slightly stronger. And yeah, bleed counts, but yeah, it's still just slightly. And even then, Ichi can kill easier that can kill Makimo easier than Makimo can. That's it. Moving on. But for real, does the faster swimming speed really give a better incentive to buy than the faster overall speed and better matchup spread? I mean, the resistances are neat and, you know, better bleed damage is always a good thing. But I really think that when being attacked by a Torvo, <laughs> infection is the last thing you should be wary of. I wouldn't recommend to buy Makimo unless you really want Dinosukus. I would even tell you to buy Suko before Makimo. Overall, I think this is a disappointing Dino. Well, crap, but... Now, this is a contentious topic. Because if Elder Dinosukus in the current iteration didn't exist, I will say without any doubt that Dinosuchus is the biggest scam ever. Having to master 5 dinos, one of them an apex, and having to pay a total cost of 2,367,000 amber just to have the option of buying it for 5 million making it a total investment of 7,267,000 amber for something that a Spino can easily kill. And Spino isn't supposed to kill any apexes, would be a massive scam. And in some parts, it is. Idle Dinosuchus is a downgraded version of Spino. And some might say, but, but, bear trap. Yeah, sure, bear trap does huge amounts of damage. But it takes 20 seconds of cooldown, and it takes quite a long time to charge. And with the recent changes to full, it doesn't even take that much to refill yourself. So that's much damage to kill meteors like Serato, Makimo, or even, you know, Torvos that don't know how to exploit the water to look around. It's a little bit of overkill. That damage is only good for other Deinosuchus. And, you know, if you are being chased by another, you can just, you know, hold W. However, as I say, if Elder didn't exist, I would say this is a scam. Because Elder Dinosuchus is in a different tier. I will even go as far as looking at Elder and Adult Dinosuchus as two separate creatures. Which I think is fair. After all, going from... To, from 7 tons to 16 is way too much, like comparing Ichi to Suku. Elder Dinosuchus is hands down the strongest carnivore in the game, being able to one shot basically everything that is in a apex. But you know, it 
it still can be chased by holding W. And for things it can kill, you know, even though it can one shot almost everything, the closest thing you will be killing is maybe a stock Dinocarus or what well, AFK stock Dinocarus. Sun bathing Dinosuchus. The, the best way I can describe him is basically El Dinosuchus, expensive spine. Elder Dinosuchus, freaking Godzilla without his legs. Overall, I think these are great additions to the roster that gave Spinosaurus some competition. Well, it is the only one with competition. Suko, however, has become an actual gatekeeper for crocodiles. For a long time, I always thought of Zuko as a basically worthless creature. However, no Zuko is, you know, more of an apex than Spino when in land. Spino also is in a better spot. Anyway, I hope that the crocs get improved in the future when giving them a launch and a grab. This event is probably the chillest event so far. I am counting the Valentine's event. This one is an egg hunt. You just gonna walk around, find eggs in the ground that range from the Catan, Gadol, and Kabir eggs. That gives you amber, fossils, and so special eggs that I'm going to talk about later. And also there are tiered eggs that give you exclusive skins that, you know, are exclusives. If you want more information about them, I recommend you to go to Laser's video talking about it. She's got some good information about the event for you to watch. Also, here are some of the skins that I got. Speaking of skins, we also got a new bundle of them, melanistic and leucistic skins. You can buy them in their respective eggs, some of them are very neat, others are weird, and others are cursed. This is a cool idea that gives a nice amber sink for some recolored versions of the default skins. I found this a very inoffensive way. To give players an incentive to spend their amber or just hoard it for new dinos. Overall this event is alright, I can't really say a lot more about it, it's pretty bare bones but the rewards are pretty nifty. A new player can basically get almost, what, if uh, from a day of just searching for eggs can get even to, a, to the 100 case of amber. I've already talked about the new mechanics, but there have been some changes that I should point out. First, the daily rewards now appear automatically when you log on and now you can get free dinos from them. If you already have them, you just get their price in amber. Sometimes you get something really good for, you know, the fifth day of logging, like Allosaurus Ichorinator. And sometimes you get something worthless, like, I don't know, Austroraptor. There's also a, the new codes tab. You can go around the map to find hidden codes or look at the development slash updates tab in the Discord server. Then you just go in, uh, write them and you get some rewards. There's also a new currency skin tokens. You can get them from the melanistic and leucistic skins, which is 
the way to get said skins. However, some of you already noticed that you can get a lot of tokens even when already owning a skin. This is a preamble to either of two mechanics that I don't really think I am legally allowed to say. Even though I like these updates, the bugs, food, chain, food changes, and salt are annoying. I hope the devs keep on working on fixing the issues brought up by this update and not the launching and grabbing for crocs. I give this update a... Uh, I'm between 6.6 .6 and 7. You know what? I'm gonna give it a 7. A neat update with fun playables, but annoying mechanics and bugs. Anyway, that's the video. I hope you really enjoy it. If my ranking wasn't fair, please put your ranking and why you ranked it in there below in a constructive manner. I always read comments. Have a good one and uh... Nos vemos en julio para el jurásico.